I think to the extent that we can shine a light on the ways in which these misconceptions about language sort of perpetuate these racist ideas that continue to circulate in our society, it's important, especially when it comes to language, because a lot of times people assume that there is some linguistic basis for the stigma, and they're not aware that it really is about the people. What does standard English accomplish that these so-called versions of substandard English don't accomplish in terms of communication? Nothing. You know what I mean? Nothing at all. Any And anything that seems to stand in the way, you say, oh, it'll help you get a job. Well, is that because of the language? It's not that you're unable to communicate, or is that because of all these various isms that stand in the way of you being able to take care of yourself because you live in a country that likes to do things like stand in the way of certain people being able to take care of themselves? The, the issue, Mr. Chairman, has received a lot of attention all over the United States. And I, I simply want to say that that I think ebonics is absurd. In the mid-90s, uh, 1995, 1996, there was the big ebonics controversy. Many linguists have stated that Oakland's decision is credible, it is rational, and a potentially effective way to improve the academic standard of its students. The Oakland School Board was trying to get what had been fairly solidly established linguistic research into schools and the public really misunderstood the message of what was happening and reacted in, in ways that kind of set back what educators were trying to do with language. That's just bad English, isn't it? How can you say that's a language? No, that's different English. No, that's it's not bad no, English. That's not, but that's your opinion that it's bad. No, it's See, not my opinion. A lot of teachers just kind of take what they've heard, sort of the, the predominant social narratives, and they just sort of, you know, reproduce them. The average citizen who encountered the term of ebonics during the Oakland controversy did so at a time when late night talk show hosts were, you know, lampooning the term. And as a professional linguist, I was disheartened when I saw so many people mocking a term that referred to linguistic circumstances that I think should be better understood by the entire nation, but which have been the object of linguistic discrimination since the inception of slavery.